Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Portal with Terry Huberman. I am so excited to bring you my next guest. His name is Pete Martocci of Peaceful Pathways. He's a medium and he's a shaman. And I'm going to let him talk more about himself and what he does. And I've got some questions for him. And I'm just really excited to be bringing him to all you guys so you guys can learn and explore and expand your conscious and aware, consciousness and awareness too, just like I'm about to. So let me welcome Pete Martocci of Peaceful Path Pathways. Hey, I don't have any in-studio clapping. So um, this oh. is gonna have to do. <laughs> How are you? Oh, it looks like our Thank Zoom's you. a little weird. There we go. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change this for a second. See if this helps. Um, gotta love. Uh, oh, there we go. Much easier. Much better. Gotta love technology. I've been like, I'm not a tech person whatsoever. So I've been arguing with my tech recently. So, yeah. Pete, Pete, yeah. Pete, Pete. Pete. <laughs> please explain to people. Share with people what you do, how you do, and all the things. All right, uh, so um, I first became aware of spirit when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I had spirit, uh, spirit come to me, kind of scared me for a while. And, you know, I didn't really know what to make of it. Didn't really have anyone to help guide me. Yeah. And uh, I was scared of it. And then uh, when I was in my 20s, my grandmother passed and I started getting visitations from her. Mm -hmm. and, and just being aware of her around me and from there she, she from the spiritual realm kind of synchronous people different guides teachers and i went through this whole phase where i was in spiritualist churches doing mm -hmm. mediumship and then I kind of got connected to shamanism through a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. And through there, I kind of, I felt like shamanism was the path for me. Okay. Or, Good. you know, I felt connected to it more, you know. Uh, it felt like every time I tried to get away from it, it pulled me back in, you know, <laughs> like. I couldn't, That's how you know. You know, it was the truth, you know? like the godfather, you yeah. know. Yeah. Every time I tried to get away from it, it just you know something came up that helped me i could address it through shamanism whether it's uh energy healing um i also felt like shamanism was an easy path to teach people you what? know like it's it's very you it's very like, easy for the common or, what well do you, when you mean teaching do you mean like you teach them how to be shamans or you you like that's how you would teach like you're, that would be your tool for teaching i feel, I feel like i feel like anyone can journey which is like drumming you know anyone can listen to a drum and have a sort of an experience got it so i like if i was going to share with somebody i think shamanism is the easiest path to sharing okay you know i feel like a lot of people have um blocks when it comes to talking to spirits who've passed they have like unnecessary fears then you have like you know is it good or evil which is a yes. block for people you know yes. the catholic church block i call it you know yeah oh that's um, a good way of describing it i find that too yeah so okay yeah so shamanism is just easier for you to get through to people i think so i mean you know, I feel like anyone can listen to a drum mm -hmm. and relax and kind of have some sort of energetic or visual experience. Can you, can you explain what a, like what journeying is? Cause I don't know if everybody knows that. I mean, I've, I've done a few and they're amazing. Uh, yeah. So, uh, there's four major brain states brainwave states in your brain it's alpha beta theta delta yeah so alpha is like uh if you're outside doing physical activity you're moving around you're conscious of your environment and you're also conscious of your body 
uh, beta is like when you're watching TV, you're like observing, you're kind of aware, but you're also kind of, you know, sedated. Uh, theta state is um, like meditation. Uh, delta is sleep, but theta state is where your awareness is kind of expanded. You're a little more sensitive. Um, you pick up different things that you may not be aware of. So theta state, they found actually scientific proof that if you hear repetitive sounds, it doesn't necessarily have to be a drum or a rattle. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be if you're, you know, I used to ride the train to Manhattan every day and you get into this weird state when you hear the train going, any repetitive sound kind of puts you in an altered state and kind of opens you up. So a, a basic shamanic journey is a drum or a rattle, any kind of sound that's repetitive with, you know, guided intention to connect to something higher. Uh, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. That's awesome. Yeah, I can tell you that it feels really good to be journeying. Like it's, yeah. it is other, it is otherworldly it, to me, yeah. you know, um, I just, it, it yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Anybody who can lead a journey, <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Because I, I can do a lot of things, but I can't lead a journey. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's so, not. I'm so grateful to, to folks who can. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so journeying, is it easy for somebody to get in? Like, I feel like it is. I feel like anyone can kind of relax with that repetitive sound. It kind of, that repetitive sound kind of forces you to kind of calm down a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know? And even if, even if a journey just helps you relax, when you can relax, you can kind of take time to be more aware of things. Yeah. You know? Even within yourself, even if yeah. you're just, if there's thoughts that you're not consciously aware of, all the time you kind of when you relax it allows you to kind of process them and see what they're about you know yeah. you don't it's like a, a way of looking at your own thoughts yeah one of the things i noticed too is that like when we are calm and when we're in that state there are sometimes parts of our body might feel uncomfortable and i think it's because we've gotten out of our head and and since our bodies hold the energy it's like we know that in that particular body part we're holding some sort of energetic imprint to something oh yeah without you a know? doubt and so then we can like kind of like look into it and see well you know what is going on and i think that's one of the cool things about journeying is that when you and and it's it's you when you can focus on something then maybe an emotion or something might come up so is that what you're talking about when you're saying yeah i mean sometimes it doesn't you know it doesn't always have to be you know even as a medium yourself sometimes people describe talking to spirit like it's this muse um movie like yeah. theatric experience yeah. where <laughs> it can just be like, oh, I'm seeing a picture of your grandma. Yeah. And that's, it doesn't have to, and the same with journey, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I spoke to God and all this awareness came to me and stuff like that. It could yeah. just be, you know, I'm holding a lot of anger in my gut and yeah. this helped me release it, you know? Yeah. 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 I a think, exception, you know? It, and that's the thing, I think. Um, so recently what I did just to, to kind of like piggyback on that, people have this expectation of how things should be any experience just in life in general. But then when you're dealing with like metaphysical and esoteric experiences, like you and I provide, um, people expect it to look and feel and be a certain way, like a nice, neat little Tiffany box. So I don't know about you, but like every time I have to share, like, don't have an expectation, you know, it, we all communicate different. Everybody brings a different experience. I actually recorded a video that I now send to my clients when they book readings as a session prep, because it was taking up time away from the session, explaining the setup, because then you know, I, I personally want people to have a good experience and I know you do too, but when people come in with this like expectation and it's not met, it doesn't mean it was a bad experience or it sucked. It just meant like 
it just didn't happen the way you thought it would in your mind, you know? Yeah, so well, I was gonna say I'm used to, uh, when I first started doing mediumship, I would serve spiritualist platforms where you would give mm -hmm. them demonstrate groups. Yeah. And like one of the first lessons I had to learn is like, you know, don't connect so much with who you're reading for because you get, to, sometimes people are just no, or yeah. uh, they have like this amnesia yes. and they're, or, they're, or they're expecting like, I want to hear from my grandmother, but I'm bringing through something, somebody else. It's yeah. like, they're not even hearing me. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. So I remember one of my mentors used to do this exercise where you would like connect energetically and he would like ask a simple question and you would respond by saying like a hard no or like a yes. Yes. Yeah. Just you you feel the shift. Yeah. People give you those no or you know it's like it's so sometimes it's so hard to come back from. Yeah. Because you get so wrapped up in somebody else's energy of like no and then you're like, you know. Well, plus you're 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 serving the spirit world and you're serving the human world and you're just doing the best that you can yeah. and you don't want to let either one down. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah. So yeah. One of the things that like you and I were chatting, I can't remember when, cause we, we've had a few chats about, um, attachments, right? Cause you connect primarily, I know you have various energies or, or uh, avenues that you connect, but with Kali, right? Which is the goddess yeah. of destruction, right? Uh, yeah. Like Phoenix from the ashes, right? <laughs> You and I were talking about attachments and I was really fascinated and I wanted to personally learn more and I'm sure people who are watching this would, would want to learn more. Can you explain like more about what an attachment is, how someone can get it and how you can help or like what you do to help detach attachments? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, but yeah. So I'll just share one of my first experiences was yeah. uh, I, uh, I, like I said, I connected to a shaman. I had multiple sessions with her, but one of the first sessions I had with her, she, I saw, we went on a journey. She led a journey for me and I saw this whole group. Well, first I saw, uh, a, a, a Greek God shooting arrows and wow. he was shooting them at me. And then this like whole group, like tribe with fire was dancing around my body uh. when I was dead. And, you know, I came back and she's like, did you get the message? And I was like, I, I, I told her what I just told you. And she's like, well, mm -hmm. bow and arrow and the Greek God that you connected to are symbols of what's called a psychopomp, which is somebody who helps people pass into the spiritual realm. And this tribe was a symbol that, cause she was a psychopomp too. Mm -hmm. that we're in the same tribe that we're connected and that we worked together before. But your purpose spiritually is to help people deal with uh, passing into the spiritual realm. So, I, I mean, I was getting into mediumship at the time. I didn't really know what to make of this. And she's like, you, you, uh, we have more work to do today. So she's like, <laughs> we're going to do another journey and I'm going to show you something. So we go into this journey. I'll never forget it. The guy, all of a sudden, as soon as I went down, in my mind's eye, all I could see was this, uh, he looked like Nosferatu, the uh, the old like vampire movies. Yeah, yeah. Really creepy. <laughs> yeah. Really creepy. And he had like this, it was like almost like this thing on his back going over his head with all colors and symbols. And I could feel like he was really old. And I come back from the journey and she's like, what happened? And I said, I don't know. I saw this like creepy looking, scary Dracula looking guy. And she's like, you have an attachment. And I was like, what does that mean? Like I had no clue. Mm -hmm. And prior to coming to her, I kind of felt off. Like I just felt emotional, a little tired, more than normal. I'm very sensitive to how I feel. Yeah. So uh, she's like, we have to remove an attachment. And I was like, okay. You're so, just like, 
fine. Yeah, I mean, like, what am I gonna say? I'm here. Like, I, I, I trust spirit. I do. Like, yeah. I have good trust with spirit. Like, they've never steered me wrong. So mm -hmm. I just, I usually just roll with the punches. Whatever yeah. happens, happens. So she's like, oh, I'm gonna have my. Her guide was Isis. She's like, I'm gonna have Isis work with us, and she's gonna remove it. Yeah. So I just sit there. And all of a sudden, I just feel like something, someone's pulling this thing out of my body. Like I could feel it physically, like almost like somebody was giving me a massage on my shoulders and it was pulling out. And I start like in my head, I'm like freaking out. <laughs> I Your usually... body was calm. Your head's like, fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah, no, but like <laughs> I have a stoic demeanor if I have to, you know, like, so I just... I just sit there and breathe and I'm getting this like wave of emotion and it's like just pulling. I could feel it like almost coming out of my stomach, wow. all the way out my body, all this stuff. And I'm just sitting there. She's rattling around me and stuff and it's coming mm. out, coming out, coming out. And then all of a sudden it's gone. There's no movement. I feel like a hundred times better. I feel like really light. I feel like this big internal shift. I mean, I became aware of whatever's going on. Yeah. And uh, I was a little freaked out, but I, I, I mean, she was like, uh, we removed it. And she said, you know, you're gonna start doing this for people. And I was like, oh, really? I mean, this is interesting. Like I, <laughs> I, I mean, if I have any issue in my life, I, I definitely am ex addicted to experiences. You know, I like intense yeah. experiences, even if they're terrifying. It's like, <laughs> they, at least, know. you know, you're alive. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, what's the point of living if we don't experience anything? Yeah. Yeah. So she told me, you know, she gave me basic instructions and kind of taught me what to do. Um, like you brought up Kali. A lot of times I call in Kali to work with me and, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of ways. The best way she explained it to me is that the spiritual realm, sometimes spirits get attached to being alive. There's a lot of different versions of attachments. There's emotional attachments. So if you have a repetitive emotion, say you're sad all the time, if you keep repeating it, it, it almost builds like an energetic block on your body. It's not necessarily a spirit, but there's a block and it's sure. affecting you. Yeah. So that could be a form of attachment. So you could release that and that will clear the energy. Mm -hmm. Then there's um, what she explained is some people are of higher vibration. So if a spirit is necessarily stuck or attached to being here physically, say they don't know you know, some spirits are attached to like, oh, they didn't get to finish things or what they think they were supposed to finish and different stuff. You the mean when they were when they were living, they didn't accomplish what they what they think, but it's, they it's think. really their spirit. You know, it's like they're attached yeah. to whatever was supposed to happen. They think was supposed to happen. Yeah. So they linger. And then if you're of high vibration, you're a medium, you do spiritual work they can view you as the light. So okay. they'll come to you. Yeah. Thinking that you're the light, but you're not necessarily. And they attach to you. Usually. Yeah. Usually like say, uh, you have uh, a specific emotional state that you stick to. Like if, some people get angry, some people get sad, some people like the spirit will magnify that emotion. Got it. Okay. What, what I witnessed and even in myself, because doing this work, they've put me through initiations where I had <laughs> um, to deal with spirits yeah. from all different realities and yeah. um, uh, I did mushrooms one time and had an, uh, a significant experience where I dealt with a lot, um, you know, but they always told me that it was like an initiation. And then I had one where like, I thought I was dying. It was a process. I thought I was like dying 
and like all this thing was going on. I was very anxious all the time. It took like six months to work it out. And then- Wait, wait, so so hold on a second, Pete, because I'm finding this extremely fascinating. It took, you, you did one session to do the detachment and then it was six months from that one session or did you do several sessions? This was on myself. This was on myself. Oh, on yourself, okay. They told me I was gonna have to go through an initiation process when I worked with the spirit realm. And I had this experience where this thing wouldn't leave me. It was like a higher, higher magnitude of spirit, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it, and took it took you while. six months for it yeah. to leave. Yeah. I can't imagine what kind of living hell that would have been. And on earth, like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was more of like, uh, it wasn't all the time because you have control of your body. Okay. But like, I found that part of you has to attract this experience. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there was something in me that wanted this it's really funny because I, somebody I know does like, um, it's called house alchemy, hmm. right? And she's awesome, awesome. I would highly recommend her. I can't think of her Instagram or anything, but anyway, she, uh, she told me she did work on my house that I used to have a mirror in my house that I would allow things to come in and practice <laughs> that I would, asked things to come through here that needed to be cleared from this realm wow. and practice. And she said it was a subconscious thing. And I always had like an attachment to this like random mirror in my house. And then she came out with this and I was like, now that like she said it, I felt it and knew it was true. Oh and, my God. But I mean, I don't know, like I said, I addicted to experience. It was always intense experiences. It was something that I needed yeah. to go through to kind of grow. Yeah. But I mean, for the average person, I mean, a lot of, if it's not spiritual protection, it's drugs and alcohol, right? like addiction, lower, lower vibrational emotions. Right. That's what attracts it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, but I mean, most, a lot of people that I do see have attachments. That's what I attract in my shamanic work. You know, I wonder if I've got one. <laughs> I'm sure I do. Don't you think? <laughs> I probably, I don't know, but I mean, it, from what I'm hearing you say, everybody has one or not everybody, but most people have one. So why wouldn't I have one? Well, I mean, a go-to check on yourself is pressure on your heart. Like if you, what? <laughs> I mean, I've been doing so like in the last three months, I've been doing a lot of heart coherency work. Yeah. to connect the brain and the heart because that creates realities and dimensions and manifestations. And that's primarily the direction I'm heading. Yes, I'm a psychic and a medium, and but I do my energy healing through that. So I wonder if like that's part of my process of healing my attachment or whatever. It's like, you know, my heart coherency work. Yeah, well, um, or is you that know, different? your heart is the light yeah. in your, your soul. So like yeah. they always go there first. So you would always feel like it almost feels like a, somebody's putting their finger on your heart, that like a pressure. I don't Usually when it. I, if I meet somebody like, and I, I could feel it, you yeah. know, right away. Even guys I work with, you know, yeah. like on the ground, I still have my other job and like, you could feel it on people. Oh. They carry it, you know, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. Uh, what is it like? What is your process when you're working with somebody and you're helping them clear an attachment? Like, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. I'm just drumming. Oh, and so doing, okay. um, usually what I do, and this is what the shaman taught me originally, is I've gone through different guys. But right now, Kali mm -hmm. is my main guide I call in. And she like... I call it merging with her. So I merge with her and I drum and then she does the work. You know, they, it's always compassionate deep possession. So it's always the highest good, you know, you just yeah. send it to the light and that's all our intention is. You know, usually if I'm working with somebody, I'll, I'll feel it beforehand. I get different 
how I work mediumistically too is like I'll get sensations when different spirits are here and different stuff. So right here, I'll get this like itch and I'll know that somebody has something going on. That's so funny because for me, whenever someone is around or spirit, my nose starts itching and I'm always so like this, funny. or my nose starts running. My and nose I'm like, itches too. That's yeah, so it's funny. like, it's so weird. And it's, it's kind of funny because I'll do a reading or whatever and now everything's on Zoom and like, uh, or even if I'm doing like a little coaching or whatever, and all of a sudden I just get starts getting all snotty. <laughs> I'm like, it looks horrible, but something's going around. That's so funny. So you get it here, but you also do that too. So that when I get spirit, like mediumship, yeah, like here. That's but so funny. When somebody needs to be passed, it's like here. Wow. And I'll just, you know, usually I'll rattle. It will probably be like a second journey. Usually I do like an introduction journey where like. We just see who wants to work with us, if they want to tell me anything that's going on. And then the second journey is usually dealing with it. And um, people will usually feel the heart pressure or if it's some, some are lower, sometimes you feel pressure in your gut. Um, and then I'll ask them, you know, do you feel any, like, is it feminine, masculine? Uh, is there any color, temperature? Because I was taught to teach like awareness of it, mm -hmm. you know, like, let yeah. somebody. And then I also say, you know, is there anything that needs to be expressed on behalf of the spirit? You know, if they want to say anything, you know, before we pass it into the light. And usually people will start feeling like movement upward. And uh, sometimes emotions come up. You know, it could be an intense experience. You know, some people can cry, some people release stuff, you know? Yeah. I was gonna say like, what what might it be like for the person receiving this um, experience? But you're, you're, you're describing it pretty good. Yeah, usually, uh, you know, it feels intense. I always tell people if it's an attachment, it's intense, you know, cause there's another spirit connected to you. So, and sometimes, you know, there's also a lot of things, you know, sometimes there's a uh, history with the spirit. Sometimes it's been there for a long time. You know, they find a lot of people report like having experiences as a kid, you know, making deals with spirit that they don't even know, you know, like for protection, like I don't have to feel fear anymore, but you can stay with me, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. Imaginary friends. That type of... I had a few imaginary friends going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you know, like I find as crazy as this sounds, um, the more initiations I've done, the more uh, it's easier to connect. Right? Yeah. Well, because like the thing is, here's the thing, and this is my belief system, and this is also that uh, something that I just, I, I actually experienced this year when I went, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza, but he does a lot of energy work with the quantum field. And so I, I did his week long um, seminar thing and I had some experiences with multidimensional beings. Like it was really, really cool. And one of the most important things that I really realized was to be a healer of any sort, any kind of healing, you have to go through your own healing and your own initiatory experiences because it shows you that you are worthy to receive the healing. Yeah. Yeah. How are you supposed to help someone else heal if they don't feel worthy enough to receive? So you have to be able to be worthy enough to receive the healing so that you can give the healing so that they, you, you kind of guide them into their worthiness of receiving the healing. Yeah, yeah. So, no. and I, and I, th to me, like I'm hearing you say all those things, and it's like that's exactly what it feels like to me when I'm hearing you say that. It's like just giving yourself opportunities to receive the healing, because, you know, what good are you as a healer if you don't feel worthy enough to even receive healing? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. So that's that's fascinating. And 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 Pete, let me ask you this question because this is something that I've experienced and I continuously experience and I have a feeling I continually will. And you let me know if you have a similar experience. Like I have different initial I, I don't know if you can call it maybe you can call initiations awakenings too. Do you do you think that can be? Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. 
So I have had several of them throughout my life. And so that makes me think that it's not just like a one time thing that I'll probably even have more while I'm wearing my earth suit. Do doesn't that make sense? Is that, ha has that been your experience? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I've worked on like, definitely one of my issues working mediumistically as well as anything is like, don't have expectations. Right. Because I always, right. a lot of times I want, like, I want somebody to get it. Like, you know, I've had so many experiences, even like me seeing a medium myself, like, yeah. Where I was like, holy shit, like this changed my whole view of everything. Yeah. You know, like one of the, f that's when I was opening up, I, I went to see a medium just randomly. A friend had like a party mm -hmm. and invited a medium. Yeah. As soon as I walk in the door, she's like, are you Pete? And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, your grandma's been here for a month. She's been following me around, like knew all this stuff. And like, I, in that moment i actually felt my grandma like stand next to me and i was like holy shit like what like it shifted everything wow. you know? for not from nothing so i yeah. i i always like wanted to give other people that like yeah this is what i got you know i want you to feel this because yeah. this changed me so much for the better yeah and i felt so much better like you know just even the subconscious fear of death that everyone probably yeah. has and right. you know when you know that there's an afterlife or you know there's more to this than yeah. this yeah you know that gives people peace yeah like look at the world now everyone you know corona and stuff like that it's like everyone you see people wearing masks and face shields in their car and you're like you can't feel yeah. good inside I mean, whatever you believe, anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. In terms of fear, like you can't, you can't be that afraid. Like, yeah. They're, they're, it's out there. We're okay. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna make it. And that's what I was thinking, and I think you helped me change my perception a little bit about attachments because I used to really have the belief system that, and I'm I come from a paranormal background, so it's probably more like media, like drama, you know, like an attachment, like now you're possessed, and you know, and all of that stuff. But um, I always was of the belief system that um, if you were not mentally stable, that's how you would get an attachment, but. I mean, after chatting with you a few times and learning more, you know, through you, it's like you can still be a really high vibrational state. And then it's just now you're the light, you know, and so someone, you know, I've had that actually with relationships in life, not necessarily, and I don't know if this is like just something where like ex exes of mine, ex ex boyfriends, like they don't leave me alone or they stalk or whatever. They always come back or whatnot because I have a healing capability that they need that even though we broke up or whatever, they still need it, you know? But that's like, that, that I would, to me, it's similar to what you're talking about. Well, it's, it's funny you say that because that's what I was just gonna say is like, you think of somebody who, you know, maybe isn't having the best relationships and it's like, why are they attracting that experience? Yeah. Like they have to heal, you know? And it's yeah. even with me is like, I felt like a lot of, I mean, this is the story of my life is like, I always feel like I have to suffer to like prove my worth almost, yeah. you know, it's like got to work hard to earn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. you know, it's like now, even now, like I'm trying to transition to doing this work more full time. And it's like, yeah. how do I walk away? Like, yeah, to like prove, yeah. you know, it's like you can't do this for a job. You have to work. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that's that's the hard part about being a human, too. It's like when you have certain talents and skills and then you just have this stirring and this like yearning and desire to be of service, but you still have like your human things that you have to do, you know? Right. And, and I don't know about you, but I get a lot of flack for charging for my services. People are, you should be giving it away for free. And people ask for free things all the time, but I'm like, I'm in a human container yeah. Um, I have bills to pay just like yeah. you do and time. It's my time. It's not just my skill and my talent, but it's my time. Yeah. And so I, you know, I don't know if that's something that you, you know, but that's part of like 
managing the human aspect and then then you know the physical and the non-physical aspect so it gets to be really challenging and and i'm finding a lot of people have a lot of nerve and i'm like mm -mm. you know so yeah. there's the boundary setting too which is so hard as somebody who just wants to be of service you know yeah. and it's, it's like, like oh my god how am i supposed to do all this why <laughs> well even in terms of money it's like uh you know like i one uh my mentor always taught me like start cheap like so if you do 50 bucks a session do 50 bucks then when it's time to go up somebody will start giving you more money yeah, yeah. so then you get like a hundred and then whatever but i always get people who are like you know because i do house clearings too and like i charge a lot because it's a lot it's like a toll whenever i do them i'm like drained yeah it's exhausting so, yeah so when i charge a lot i'm like this is what i'm charging even if it's you know yeah. i mean yeah. Because you feel bad because you don't want to be like, oh, you know, I'm turning down something to help and stuff. It's but it's hard. also like, it's also a, you know, it's a toll on me. Like, I yeah. don't, I feel tired for like two days after I do. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I wish people understood that, that and then the whole expectation thing. But I guess, you know, that's part of our role is in teaching them is like, you know, it, there's physical and non-physical. There are things to expect, things not to ex expect life isn't always fair it really yeah. isn't i mean we want it to be and it's not but there's just there's so many different things i think you know i am blessed and grateful to share and teach people and i love that you know um i'm connecting with like really good-hearted people and like the right people and i mean that's why i bring my guests here on the portal here like i i want real authentic people who have good intentions you know and so i met i met you through christian bradley west yeah. who's the um clear, country clairvoyant on instagram and you know we were just chatting and he's like oh i gotta tell you about pete and i was like tell me about pete you know so it's really it's cool it's just i yeah, when you're at the right place at the right time in in evolution, I'm not just saying you, but just like in general, we always come across the right people and having that trust that we're at the right place at the right time. And we are where we are and wherever we are is okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Pete, thank you, thank you. So I got a question for you. Would you like a reading? Cause this is the, the part where I give like, it, it's a quickie. <laughs> Would you like to have a quickie? <laughs> But if you'd like a reading, I'd be more than happy to give you a reading. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Do you have Do you have any questions in mind? Uh, maybe just path, I guess. We'll see what I'm. You're on the right path, and like, yeah. Or like what it, if anything I should head to or. Okay. On I don't know. Yeah, let's take a little look here, and then afterwards, I want to make sure that if people want to work with you, that we get all of your um, information out. I'll also make sure I have all your information in the. Um, description section below as well but um i just because you know you're good people so i want people to be able to find you if they need help and you do online work right yes yes well, especially now with everything you know hmm. nice 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 okay so it does feel to me so something's coming up about and i don't know if you know this or not and maybe this is just your your transition into uh you know, from regular work to, to more of this full-time work, but there is a, a close coming to the end um, of a cycle. It is a cycle that is very mental for you. So this is something that you think a lot about. Um, and what is also coming up is that, <laughs> I know we just had this conversation, but, and this kind of piggybacks on it, you can actually be charging more than you are. Okay, that's what's coming up here. Um, you don't have to charge that much more. You can even just raise five bucks, 10 bucks, but they are saying you should be um, because you're expanding. So there is some sort of growth and recognition happening. Do you understand this? Has this been happening? This feels like within the last even three months, this has been happening. Yeah, Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. 
So it's like this quote, but this is that mental over and over and over again, like, can I? You are, here's what I can say. The transition will be smooth and easy for you. So you can kind of calm down and relax about it. So um, you're, be, you're, you're, I feel like your guides, your team, everybody is like, we get it, Pete, you're scared. We get it. So we're going to make this as compassionate and graceful as possible. There is celebration. I do feel, I feel two years from now. Now I, it could be within two years or in two years. So it could be sooner than two years. You will pretty much be transitioned into full time. Right. Okay. So, um, and there's something about you not having to worry about feeding your kids. I don't know. Do you understand this? So like, are you always concerned? How am I going to feed my kids? Just, you know, I make a lot of money what I do now to just like jump to shit. Go. Yeah. You know, I'm doing an extension on my house this month. Like, it's like, yeah. it's just, oh, I'm going to do a spiritual work now and like give up yeah. a lot yeah. of money. When, when it came time for me, I wasn't going to leave my day job. I would never, because I had my, my, at least I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going to grow. I wasn't going to make more money in my day job, but I was going to stay there. And spirits like, no, guess what? You're going to get laid off after six years. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? What am I going to do now? And so I, I took the, the leap. I did it. And I, and I'm still like, how and why? And I don't get it, but that's not my job, right? It's not my job. My job is just to be of service and make sure, you know, but yeah. they're saying two, uh, two years, you should transition fine. The money will be there to feed your children. Um, and there is talk about you working with other people too. So I don't know if that's something that you're gonna do or are considering doing, but there's collaborative work with you with other people as well. Whatever they want to give me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there's celebration and happiness. Um, I don't, are you, mm, okay, I'm just gonna say this. We don't know yet because it's prediction-y, but were you ever considering having more children or uh, because it does feel like there's a possibility of more kids in the future or at least one more child so do october 26th oh oh my goodness okay well congratulations i did not know that congratulations that's like super close <laughs> i was like there's there's another kid i don't know if you want another one but there's one oh god that's so funny yeah celebration for that one so and this baby's special very very special not that your other kids are not special but this one's bringing um so its own bread basket that's what they're saying so again yeah. that's that's really yeah. nice yeah that's awesome so yes you're on the right path um you will feel significantly better way more sure that you are doing the right path because you'll be in that i mean you already are on it but like it let's just say it kind of solidifies and it um you, the, the money helps you under because again you know we're humans so we need that security just like anybody else i don't care if i piss off yeah. people by saying that i don't care you know spiritual people are still fucking humans and they got shit that they got to do in the human world so i know i piss off people i don't care but <laughs> but um you'll feel better about your like financial and holding with the family and being able to do all of that um so yeah either in two years or sooner than two years within two years all right so so pete how can people find you how can they work with you if they wanted to um work with you uh the best way is instagram peaceful okay. pathways 33 i also have a website peacefulpathways.net you can find me on there instagram is the best way to reach me okay i'm starting a patreon it should be up soon nice oh what are uh, you gonna do on the patreon I'm um, just doing videos, journeys, like doing journeys, different. I'm doing everything. I'm going to kind of dabble in everything. I've touched in on everything from energy healing, mediumship, ritual, awesome. uh, shamanism. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to try to put like a video up every week, teaching or whatever, nice. you know, if you feel pulled to. Yeah, that's great. I have a Patreon too. That's so awesome. it, it's fun because I do like workshops. I'll do group readings. We'll do energy shifting. And then we'll even just hang out sometimes because commute for me, like my number one value is connection. Like I realize that. So now I'm living my life through that lens of connection, connecting to other people, connecting to myself, connecting to the divine. So I wanted to like create Great. community. So 
um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So awesome, awesome. Pete, thank you so much for joining me here on the portal. And everybody else who's watching or listening, thank you so much for joining me on this journey because this is it's 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 a challenge to be human and um i learned so much from each and every one of you who are watching and who engage and who ask me questions and who work for me, with me it's it's really it's truly it, it's a gift and it's an honor and i thank you for helping me with my human experience and again thank you pete for coming and being a guest here on the portal and you guys know how I always end this, right? Stay connected, stay connected to yourself, stay connected to your friends and family. And of course you can stay connected to me and I'll see ya on the flip side.